going to be on tomorrow, lunchtime, I believe 12, 12, 15, with Giles Tiger Thomas. That's when we'll give our previews, predictions, everything. But I want to hear from you guys right now. I want to hear what you got to think. You're the fans. You're the ones who make this sport possible. There is no Mr. Olympia. There is no sport of bodybuilding without you guys. So you're not wrong, whatever your predictions are, because the show hasn't happened yet. I've seen a lot of a lot of things happen over the years. A lot of times where people were favored to win or to be very high up in the show, and then things go wrong sometimes last minute. Peaking problems, water, carbs, sodium, who knows? All kinds of crap goes wrong. They don't end up looking the way we did. And then other people who nobody was talking about, nobody was really expecting much from at all. They were just supposed to be happy to be there kind of guys. They ended up doing very, very well. So anything can happen at the Mr. Olympia. So the focus, you know, we'll talk about open, but if you guys want to want to throw in your opinions on 212, classic, anything, of course. This is your forum. We're live. Another thing I want to mention is... Uh, Sometimes you guys, uh, not you guys, occasionally someone will say, your mic is horrible. I'm, I'm using a phone for this. When I go live, I'm just using my phone. It's an iPhone 10. I will be getting a 13 soon. Don't worry. But uh, my good audio is with the Yeti microphone right there that I don't have it connected to here. So you're just going to have to deal with my uh, iPhone audio for now. So I'm going to go to your questions or comments. So let's see, I think we need to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna do the F5 thing to refresh the screen. Oh, videos. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so let's take a look at what you guys have to say. Can you please go over the schedule? Oh boy. Okay, so the full schedule, you can find it on MrOlympia.com. I don't know if tweet 212 judging is Friday morning. It's it's at 9 a.m. Hall E, the uh, Orange County Convention Center West, but I assume you're not going to the show. Uh, Olympia Productions. Olympiaproductions.com is that's the website where you can get the pay-per-view. There is no free stream for this. The Arnold did have a 100 percent free stream. This does not have a free stream. And if they see people streaming with their phones, I saw it last year, they kick their asses out because they say specifically. We're doing a pay-per-view. You can't stream in here. People still do it, and they get they get tossed out, or they get, you know, they sometimes they get a warning, but usually they get tossed right out. So yeah, the schedule Friday Friday uh, all the judging happens on uh, Friday. So in the morning, you have fitness two twelve figure women's physique, Ms. Olympia wellness, and then at night at seven p.m. they have the finals for all those plus the judging for the Mr. Olympia. Oh, I was wrong. There's more judging. I'm sorry. Saturday morning. And all the judging is being held this time at the expo because now there's going to be a full expo. I interviewed Dan Solomon. That's going to be posted tomorrow too. Wow. A lot of videos. And uh, there's going to be about 100 booths. So not a huge expo, but 100 booths is a good size expo. So Saturday is the judging in 9 a.m. starts for classic men's physique, bikini, and a wellness and wheelchair. They're going to do both the judging and the finals all at once. If it's like last year, we I start I start at nine handle chair and I don't leave that area till I don't think it, it ended till about three o'clock in the afternoon last year, uh, and then of course Saturday night that's the the final final the last finals it's Mr. Olympia finals men's physique bikini and classic so let's go back to let's get some predictions I want to hear some schedules Art good hello looking forward to Olympia I think Romney will win but hoping for Nick Walker yeah in the thumbnail I did put. Uh, Someone's going to talk shit about the thumbnail because it's they'll say it's disrespectful to Brandon Curry or Heidi Chupan, who are the, you know, there's all these Olympia graphics and ads that they're putting out that have those three men. That was the top top three last year, right? Yeah. It's probably it's probably going to be the top three again. Rami, Rami Brandon Curry, and Heidi Chupan, probably. But, you know, Nick Nick's looking great. Nick could slide in there, especially if someone's off. You know, Rami, Rami could be off. Rami's been off. He's only really looked, uh, I still haven't seen Rami what I consider perfectly peaked because he still doesn't have all the detail and stuff like Phil Heath. It's probably a genetic thing. I don't think he's ever going to have that, but Rami's been off and on, off and on, off and on. Uh, we hope that with Chad Nichols, he can be, he can be on again consistently. They say, well, Chad worked, Chad knows how to work with these huge, huge guys. Like obviously Ronnie Coleman was enormous. So a lot of people instantly assume only someone like, Chad's the only guy who can work with people that size. 
But if you look at Ronnie's track record, eight years as Mr. Olympia, he was off a times. He was off a couple times. He was not peaked perfectly. Maybe half the half the Olympics he won. The first two he looked amazing. Uh, as he got bigger and bigger, it became. It, it, I think it became harder and harder to get him dialed in. Uh, so let's see what you got. What you got, guys? Oh, this thing doesn't work. Sorry. Where's my mouse? There it is. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. So let's hit it. let's get back to your questions and commentary. Fort Olympia, welcome to chat. Uh, Bumpstead for three peat. Yeah, probably. I mean, Bumpstead, he could lose. He could lose. Breon could get his title back. Terrence Ruffin was second place. Terrence coming off very strong Arnold Classic win. Terrence is no joke, but Chris Bumpstead looks freaking great. Chris is a tremendous. He's like the poster boy for Classic Physique, you know. Uh, I'm sure someone else will have some more opinions here. Uh, I see I can't move the screen. While I have that on. Um, three Pete, Bump said top five in your opinion. We're all giving the same top five. Pretty much everybody's giving the same top five. We're not nobody's really going out on a limb and putting any uh dark horses in there, but I think it's gonna be Rami probably for the win. It might be the same top three. It might be Rami, Brandon, Hadi, and then then you got Bonak and you got Nick uh for favorites for top five for sure. Now Bonac Bonnick is next to Nick. Bonnick is an amazing competitor. He's got two Arnold Classic wins. He was second place at the Olympia two years ago. Um, one thing I do notice in his pictures on this side, he's, he's got some pretty bad gyno now. I don't know if that's going to affect the way the judges score him or anything. Uh, he really needs to get that taken care of. You know, a lot of these guys, most of these guys get gyno at one time or another, but they usually get it removed surgically. So it's just, it's just a little distracting, especially when the arms are up. Certain poses like the abdominal and thigh. Anytime the arms are up, that's when the gyno seems to be a lot more apparent. When your arms are down, it's not as bad. I never had gyno, thank God. Oh, here we go. Do you think Bonak is on the way out? He seems to be slipping since 2019. Not really. What was he, only fourth place last year? I mean, he was way up there still. I mean, when you're in the top five, you can't... Top five of the Olympia, the top five of the world. And he won the Arnold Classic last year, 2020. I don't think you can say he's slipping. If... If he doesn't do well at this Olympia, then you could start making that argument for sure. Uh, let's see. In 212. 212, it's going to be a battle. Sean Clarita is no joke. He's a tank. He's like five foot one. Going to be about 180 pounds. That's an enormous... Think about that. If he's 5'1 and 180 in shape, if you figure 10 pounds uh, per inch of muscle is about the right equation. So if he was Rami's height, if he was 5'10, 5'11... Uh, in the argument, so how tall Rami is. He'd be about 280, 290. He's enormous. And you also have Derek Lunsford looking crazy, crazy. So huge. And I think I think Hani's going to do a great job with Derek and bring him in at his very best ever. Derek's had issues where he was flat sometimes, a little spilled over other times. It seems like the last week was where Derek ran into a lot of problems the past couple of years. And I, I really believe Hani has a good chance of making sure he comes in perfect. You also have Kamal. Paulo Garni, the 2019 212 Olympia champ. You have George Peterson III, who was third place last year. You have Keon Pearson, former classic physique champ. Uh, just requal He's qualified twice for Olympia. He passed on it last year. Keon's got a crazy physique. He's like a little flex wheeler. I, I love that kid's physique. I say kid because I think he's only like 20. I they believe he's only about 27. You also have Ahmad Ashkenani coming back uh, again. He's never been out of the top five. Uh, Angel Calderon from Spain looks great. It's 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 going to be an awesome show. Uh, let's see. So Olympia pay per views, fair ninety five pre order. Yeah. Well, you know the good thing about that is it's it's everything. It covers all kinds of the content. They have eleven pro divisions. Eleven. Wow. Uh, that even covers you till uh, they're shooting this. They're doing the seminar Sunday morning after the show with the winners. It's like a two hour deal. You know, question and answer. Bob Chicarello moderates. That's pretty interesting, and that's even. So the pay-per-view goes all the way up Sunday late morning. Uh, I think, I don't know, it might even be on now. I think the amateurs are on. The, uh, Arnold, uh, Arnold, the Olympia amateur already started. It's only Tuesday, my goodness. Uh, let's see. Here are my predictions, says Sam Awad. Oh, but then someone else. Ian Campbell, Rami, Brandon, James. James Hollingshead. Yeah, James is a dark horse. That's someone I did want to mention. James Hollingshead from the UK. 
qualified for the Olympia last year, sat it out. He had qualified actually for last year, and then he competed a couple weeks later and qualified for this year. So he's had a full year. Um, he posts tons of pictures. His coach posts a lot, Patrick Tour, P-T-U-O-R on Instagram, P-Tour. James has been looking ready for weeks now. I mean, grainy, Dorian Yates set condition, round, thick, dense muscle. I think I think James has has a chance to crack that top five. You know, we got Ian Valier, we got some great guys, uh, Hunter, Labrada, it, you know, these guys. Nobody would be in that contest if they weren't very, very good. Uh, there's some people who are probably gonna be toward the bottom because somebody, somebody has to place first and somebody has to place last. Unfortunately, these guys all look great, but they can't all win. Um, so Sam Awad, oh, he did get to his predictions. Oh, Jose Cisneros Jr., I'll say E. Cisneros Jr., so the big Rami. Okay, so Sam Awad's predictions. Here are my predictions. Open Rami, then Nick. Yeah, it could happen. Stranger things have happened, Nick. For Nick Walker to get second, I would not be that shocked if it happens. And I'm not putting down Brandon or, or, uh, or Hadi or any of these people. Just you, anything can happen. You just never know. Um, so it says 212, Derek, then Sean. Okay. Classic Seabum, then Terrence. Yeah, I mean, well, that was last year, too, so not that bold of a prediction. Okay, what do I got? Let's move this down a little bit. Uh, who says Heidi? It's an H and then a symbol. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what that name is. It looks like Han. Heidi Chupan, Persian Wolf. Yeah, Heidi's got a lot of fans. Heidi's got a lot of fans. I don't know what that means coming. Gregory Elise from Canada. What's up, Greg? He's a pro. What's up? Rami has to prove that last year wasn't a fluke. Then he says, Chris owns this class, and he beat Breon when he was sick. That's true. When he won his first Olympia title, Chris Bumstead, in 2019, he was still really dealing with his kidney. Uh, what's that thing he's got? Uh, Berger's disease. He had been hospitalized like five weeks out for almost four days, I think, while they were running all kinds of tests, and he had crazy edema. He had videos where he was you know, pushing into his ankle and it would leave a hole. It would take like a, a full two minutes to come back out. That's how much water he was holding. So Chris is getting better and better. I mean, he's so young. I feel like there's something in my glasses. Yeah, Chris is only 26 years old, guys. He's still, I could see him winning, you know, four more and return, retiring at age 30 with six Olympia titles. I don't think that's out of the question. That could definitely happen. Uh, so that's from Greg. He says Chris still has room to grow while Breon is maxed out. Yeah, Breon is having a hell of a time dropping weight. He did last year, too. He has to get down to 180. And, you know, Bumstead, last year, when they heighted him, they got his height, he had grown. I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they got him at, like, 6'1", or they got him taller than he'd been before by, like, a half inch. So that allowed him to come in at 240. But the thing is, is they do that every year. Every year when they compete, they get the height for classic, and uh, he might have, he might be a little shorter this time. It's crazy. I honestly think they should get the height for these guys once, because none of these guys are growing taller. <laughs> They're all adults. They're fully grown. They're not getting any taller. Just get the height once. Keep it in a database. You know, just be very meticulous about how you get it. If they have big poofy hair or spiky hair, squash down so the hair is not contributing to the height. Make sure they're standing up straight. They're not slouched. Uh, they're not on their tiptoes. You know, get the height once, guys. Um, Art, good. What do I think about James Hollingshead? I just talked about James. I think he's great. Uh, I think he's going to be surprised. He's never been on the Olympia stage, never been up against this caliber of competition. But James has all kinds of mass, really good shape, and that grainy, grainy condition that you don't see. The condition that I see on James is what I wish I could see on Rami. If you don't believe me, go to James. It's Hollingshead89 on Instagram. Is his Instagram. Uh, and Patrick Tour is coach. P-T-U-R. Oh, P-T-U-O-R. You'll see the condition, what I'm talking about. Just the detail, the little fibers. I would love to see that with Rami because he's got so much size and good shape. If he had that kind of detail, I don't think Rami would be... Nobody would be able to beat him for a very long time, as long as he's healthy. Okay, Steve Eves will be Rami, then Hadi, then Nick. Yeah, it's it's... Honestly, I, I think Hadi versus Nick is, that's the matchup I want to see probably the most. Just because, you know, they're both freaks. They're both, you know, Nick is the mutant, but Hadi's a freak, a mutant himself. I mean, so much muscle on, 
a compact frame, wide shoulders. I think Nick's got the advantage of a little more shoulder width. Um, I think Hadi's got a little narrower waist, so a little bit more of a V taper. He's got better quads. I like Hadi's Hadi's quads are awesome. So if Nick if Nick can manage to beat Hadi, that'll be a quite an achievement because Hadi is Hadi's awesome. I, I love Hadi's physique. That's that's bodybuilding right there. Um, well, Rami, so S. McG, as good as Hani is, do you think he will know what to what to do to have Derek not come in flat? Yeah, I, I, I do believe he's probably been, if I know Hani, he's meticulous. He is a perfectionist. He probably has been doing dry runs with different types of carbs and things like that with Derek to see how he responds. He probably did like a mock peak at one point, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure. I'll talk to Hani in a few days. But I think uh, if anyone can do it, I mean, Hani's got such an awesome track record with what he did with Phil Heath and other athletes. You know, no nothing against Derek's former coach, but I, I just think Hani Hani might have a little better strategy. But we're gonna find out. And if you know, if Derek's looking the way I think he can look, I don't know. I don't know if, geez, Clarita, any of these guys, they're all so good, man. They're all, that's why this is exciting. This is the Olympia. This is the best of the best. I don't want it to be a case where. Well, this one's going to win, and you know, everyone, we'll see who's going to be second after that, third, fourth. I don't want, I don't like that. That's not exciting. I, I want to see a battle, battle for, for the title. Okay, let's see. Cool. Karni Vishal. Can Hadi beat Rami? Is this year got much more time to prep in states? I don't know. It's tough. It shouldn't be about height and stature and, you know, relative body mass, but when you have someone as big as Rami, it's just overwhelming when they stand next to, so Hadi's like five, I don't know, five, five, maybe he's five, six. Rami, what's, Rami's about five, 10, something like that. He's got, sorry, he's got about 60 pounds on him, 70 pounds on him. It's tough. It's tough when a guy is that big and, and Hadi has things that, that Rami does not. He has a level of detail, muscle maturity um, that Rami simply does not have. And I don't, at this point, don't see him ever having. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup, but I'm not going to say Hadi can't beat him. I'm not going to say any of these guys can't win because, like I said, anything can happen. There are some names in here I don't think they have a chance of winning, but, you know, if they can crack top 10, that'd be great. Okay, so Johnny says Rami, Brandon, Hadi, and the rest is up in the air. So that was pretty much last year's show. Alberto Montejo, global warming, killing us in Florida. <laughs> I don't know what that got to do with the show. Uh... I'm going to move, move this mouse and get some more questions. Sorry, you got to look up my nose. Maybe I need to let me know if I need to trim those hairs, guys. I don't want to be talking to people in Florida and they're staring at the nose hair popping on my ears. Ears. I got hair in my ears, too. I'm old. Okay, so. S oh, hi, Ron. Do you see me? How could I see you? <laughs> no, this is not uh, like FaceTiming. Um, on Instagram, you, people can ask to join, and I never, I, I did that once. I let the people, the guy join, and I was instantly regretted. He was just like bl blathering on and on. Okay, so Steve Eves, my favorite is Hadi. Wonder what they are going to do with Nick. Yeah, we'll find out. I, I'm, I'm certain Nick's going to be in the first call out. I'm certain of that. I would bet money on that. Beyond that, I don't know what's going to happen with him. S. Ulsh, I hate Nick Walker. That's a very strong word. Come on, you hate him. You can say you hate his physique. Don't hate the kid. He's a good kid. But this guy's a project of Mr. Olympia within four years. Yeah. I think Nick is a work in progress. He just turned 27 in August. He's only done three pro shows, and he's won two of them, the New York Pro and the Arnold Classic. If that's not someone who's capable of winning an Olympia in the next couple of years, I don't know who is. Will he win the Olympia? I always thought Kevin Leveroni would win an Olympia. I was I was at all those Olympias. I thought eventually he would win. I thought Sean Ray would win. I for sure thought Flex Wheeler would win Mr. Olympia at least once. Nope. So you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Okay, then Ryan Z. Nick Walker chest. Still not strong enough to hang with Rami. It's not a body part contest, you know. Some of these guys have some very weak body parts, but it doesn't. It's the, They're judging the overall physiques. I shouldn't say very weak. But, you know, a lot of guys have no calves, as Arnold points out. Um, that's just one small example, of course. Stevie, it's classic, will be C-bump for sure, then just not sure, probably Breon. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Breon 
comes back to second. He got knocked down to third after Terrence. Terrence looks very good, but Breon, uh, I've been following him. Uh, of course, I interviewed him. It's up on this channel. It, it posted today. He's looking pretty crazy. Uh, he wants that title back. I don't know if he can get it back. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's at least second place again, the way he was two years ago. Um, okay, Derek R., if they give Hadi the Olympia, would that change it to the direction from mass monsters to more of an aesthetic look? Uh, I would call Hadi a mass monster. I would not... I would not categorize Hadi as more aesthetic physique. Hadi Chupan is brutal mass on a small frame. Um, I'm not saying it's a blocky or ugly physique, but there's, it's not aesthetic. There aren't too many aesthetic physiques in this lineup. I'm, gonna re, I'm just going to look at all the names competing, and I'll tell you who I would consider aesthetic out of the Mr. Olympia competitors this year. Brandon Curry, yeah, I would say so. Bonnick, yeah, I guess. Hunter, yeah, I guess. Uh, Patrick Moore, yeah, he's, yeah. Shaban, Akeem, eh, Roly. No, man, Hassan, Regan. Regan has good aesthetics. I mean, the bigger guys, they're, it's it's a big man show. This is the big, the biggest and the best bodybuilders in the world, the very, very best. So aesthetics aren't necessarily the first thing they're going to look at. Uh, and then Anas M. Hey, James Hollington is the black horse of this Olympia. Yeah, I'm very, very curious to see how James is going to look on stage and how he's going to compare with these guys. You know, I've been following James since his uh, since he turned pro a few years back. He's made very, very steady progress. He's put on he's put on about 30 pounds since the first pro show I saw him at in Tampa. I want to say it was like 2017, maybe it was 2018. But he's he's put in a lot of hard work and he's gained a lot of size and kept his waistline, his midsection, pretty trim and tight. So. Hey, James Long. Vince Paul, not Rami. And as much as I don't want to say it, I think they won't place Nick high. Mm, I don't see Nick worse, any worse. Sixth place at the very worst for Nick. Um, unless something goes drastically wrong and he ends up holding a ton of water. You know, in a case like that, it doesn't matter who you are. You're, you're done. You're like your last call out. But... Um, his coach, Matt Jansen, has been doing a great job peaking him for these shows. I don't think he's going to mess up, mess up for the big dance, his first Olympia. Yeah. Um, let's see what else he got. Steve Eves, if, Steve Eves, if Lunsford can get in Nick Walker shape, he's the winner. Uh, Derek gets in great shape. He's, his issue in the past has been he's – it's been peaking things. He's spilled over a little bit or he's flat. It's – he always looks amazing, uh, you know, two a week, two, three weeks out, four weeks out. It's just been last minute things with uh, with Derek, and I'm, I'm really hoping this time that doesn't happen. I hope this time we get to see 100% Derek Lunsford because he's, he's very much capable of winning that. You know, obviously, I'm, Sean could keep his title. Kamal could get his title back. Keon could win. George, George Peterson, George is going to have a tough time. I'm not, I still think he's going to be in the top five for sure. It's going to be a tough show. Very tough show. I keep saying that, don't I? Uh, let's see what else we got. Sorry, I have to keep doing this because uh, I have this leaned up against the computer screen. Okay. Okay, Ronnie B. Music. Another Ronnie. Do you guys know that Ronnie Coleman's name is Ronnie? It's not Ronald. Interesting trivia fact. His mom named him Ronnie. My mom did not name me. I was named Ronald, like Donald. Okay, so, Ronnie B. Music. You think Regan Grimes can make a bigger jump this year with his improvements? I uh, haven't really seen him. He'd have to be much, much bigger. Uh, it doesn't even matter what he weighs. Don't even tell, bother telling him because the weight doesn't matter. It's all based on how you look up there. When I saw him last year, it looked to me he needed to fill out to, to hang with these guys. At the smaller shows, you know, he won in Romania. He's been doing great at the smaller shows over in Europe and everything. But uh, this is another ball. This is a whole other level. This is the best of the best. Uh, I love Regan's physique. I, he's got a great back. He's got great lines, flow to his physique, tight waistline. He needs to be bigger. He needs to be bigger if he's going to move up and hang with these guys. These are these guys are enormous. They're so big. It's funny. And until you're like actually, you know, you know, Bob Chick says, Yo, you you got to be there. You had to be there. You do get a different impression in real life, in person, especially if you have really good seats if you're up front, which unfortunately for the Olympia, that's just the VIPs. The media is in back of the VIPs. But, man, and especially if you stand next to them, like at the Meet the Olympians or whatever, 
they're like another species. These guys are so big. It's un it's crazy. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Hottie. Let's see. So, Steve Eves again. I really want to see Hottie, Rami, Nick, and James the Shed in a comparison. Yeah, that'd be a great call out. That might be. That might be the first call out. But no, I don't think so. Because Curry's going to be in that first call out. Uh, pretty sure Bon X. Unless Bon X is off, he's definitely in that first call out. Guy's been second place. What was he fourth place last year or fifth? I keep getting shit mixed up. Okay, wrestling with Jay, yep. Okay, S, I don't know. Hello, oh, Sadek from England. Do you think Rami is going to win it? Yes, if yes, why? Um, he If he can show up looking as good as he did last year, you know, who's going to beat him? Because everyone, the only, there's, there aren't that many new people. And I, I don't see Nick beating him this year, you know, in the future maybe. I don't see Hollingshead beating him this year or Hunter. I don't see any of these guys beating him this year. Uh, these are all these are all younger guys that still have more improvements to make. They're not done. You know, Rami's maxed out. Rami's not getting any better. Rami's looked pretty much the same for a very, very long time. If you look at his pictures, you know, the first show, his first pro show was 2013 New York Pro, which he won. He was 285. He hasn't really changed a whole lot. He hasn't, you know, not that he needed to. Um... But man, he was he was his was a physique built very very quickly. He turned pro in 2012, and I think he had only been serious about bodybuilding for about a year at that point. I think they had picked him off the workout floor of Oxygen Gym in Kuwait a year before that show and said, I, "I think was he working there?" I keep hearing different different versions of it. Regardless, he went from like a 200 pound regular guy in the gym to a guy who was well over 300 pounds in the off season. And competing at over 280 in one year's time. That's insane. Um, so he hasn't really been doing this as long as you might think. Uh, let's see. Sid Gandotra Walker beats Hottie. Maybe. It might happen. Hustler. I'm late today, but here to listen to Ron eagerly. Thank you, Hustler. Hustler Magazine. Only the old guys remember that. That was like the that was like the hardcore magazine. Porn. We used to have porn magazines back in the old days. It wasn't there was no internet. You had to, like, look at magazines. Good times. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sid Gondotra. So between Hadi and Rami. Yeah, I, I think Hadi's going to be looking so good that it's very, very likely he could be pushing for the win this time. He could be... He's never been in the U.S. this long. Uh, last year, he showed up two days before the show. He was holding, like, 22 pounds of water from all the flying from Dubai to you know, wherever he had to come. He had to go from here to here to here. And um, he looked much better the second night, uh, the, the finals, because he had been able to finally get rid of all the water. So he's been in the U.S. now for over a month, I think. Plenty of time. Hottie's been over. Hottie. Honey. Honey Rambo's been overseeing every workout, every meal, posing, making sure he gets his rest, keeping him nice and relaxed. So Hottie doesn't have the stress of that whole last minute struggle to get to the USA like he did last time. Even the year before, uh, he got here, I think, two weeks before. It's never been easy for him to get here, but Heidi Rambod made sure this year he's got, he's not going to be at a disadvantage because of that. So I think we're going to see the best. We're going to see the Heidi that everyone, everyone keeps talking about, 2019 Vancouver Pro, which I wasn't at. That's the show everyone says that's his best. I think we'll see that or even better this time. I hope so. I want everyone to be their best. I don't want to see people placing poorly just because they missed their peak or Anything like that. Uh, I want to see the best battle. Okay, so between Adi and Alberto Monteo going to stop commenting. Competitors with half a back missing, completely no calves, and pointy SEO delts. I think you're talking about, you must be talking about Hadi because Hadi's been, I'm not going to talk much about it because many videos have been made, but you guys who, who use gear, okay, there's only so many places. The only two places that are really safe, relatively safe, to, to inject, Steroids are your glutes and your shoulders. And these guys, they do a lot of, they do a lot more injections. They're not doing like one TRT shot a week. They're doing multiple, multiple injections. So they rotate sites. So they're going in the delt, left delt, right delt, left glute, right glute, whatever. Whatever the rotation is, you know, a lot of times you'll, you will get an accumulation of oil or scar tissue that can look pointy. I don't think he's been putting like synthol or any other type of side enhancement oil in his delts. I think it's just regular gear. That, that's just my impression. Um, Ron, Sid Gondorcha, Ron, am I coming to the O? Of course, man. 
I work for Muscular Development, man. We always cover. We're doing full coverage. Um, I'll be there. Big Mike Cox is going to be there with me. Milo Sarshev is going to be doing some more commentary with me, some wrap-ups, things like that. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. We'll be there all. Uh, I get in Thursday afternoon. I'll be at the Meet the Olympians doing interviews. Uh, Mike and Milos are already going to be there earlier in the day. They're going to do the be at the press conference. They'll do a wrap-up for that. And then we're doing play-by-play on musculardevelopment.com on the Noble Forums. Coverage brought to you by Hitech Pharmaceuticals. So, let's see. Oh, wow. XL Solid Snake XL. I got George winning 212, then Keon second, then Clarita. That's bold. And I'm not saying it can't happen. I think George Peterson the third, the bull, has a great physique. Um, he's 5'8". He stands out in that way because he's tall, but he's also up against Clarita's 5'1". Uh, uh, Derek, let's say he's 5'. Let's give him 5'6". Kamal, 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, Keon, they're all, they're all shorter, which makes them look bigger. Because they all have to, they all have to be two twelve or under. So I don't know. Uh, Steve Eves, I like Grimes to be top seven. You know, I, every guy on this list, all the way down to Hassan, Mustafa, Roli, Andrea Presti, Justin Rodriguez, Mohamed Shaban, Akeem Williams, Ian Valier, Hunter Labrada, they all have fans. That's good. They all should have fans. And if you're a fan uh, of somebody. You should want to see them do very well, and you should believe they can do very well. All these guys believe they can win or believe they can place very highly, and they should. But, you know, in the end, it's going to come down to splitting hairs. It's going to be – judging a show like this, it has to be a nightmare. I, I sit there behind the judges. And I'm like, I could – there's a call out, and I'm, sometimes I'm like, I don't know what I would do there. I have no idea. Maybe he's – he's the winner after that. I don't know. Sometimes I don't even know the winner. Okay, Art Good, do you think – Chris Bumstead. Sorry, I gotta fix this again. I gotta scroll down some more. Okay, Art Good. Art Good says, do you think Chris Bumstead risks getting too big? Risk getting too big. Uh, would he still have that class of physique? He's not gonna. He's not gonna get too big. Chris is. Uh, he's showed no interest in moving up to open. He's very conscious of his health. He does have that kidney issue. I don't think he takes much gear at all. I really don't uh, compared to some of the people we might have been talking about. Uh, I don't think he's going to worry. He's going to get too big. He's he's was 230 last year. He could be as high as 240 this year. I think he'll probably come in around, my best guess would be like two. If he's even a couple pounds heavier, let's say he's 233, 234. Three or four pounds of brand new muscle tissue on somebody, just the, just the muscle. That's a big, big difference. Very noticeable. Uh, if... So that was our good hustler. If Hottie brings that Vancouver Pro conditioning, that would be more interesting. And I think he probably will. I think this is going to be the best Hottie we've ever seen. Hustler, Big Rami, cold. Nick Walker, hot. William Bonac, history. And then, oh, that's terrible. But uh, yeah, Nick, Nick Walker, tremendously popular right now. Obviously, he just won the Arnold. It's always exciting to see new talent, obviously. And when they're young, it's even that more exciting because there's just so much more possibility. You know they have much more room for improvement. They're not done. They're not maxed out. A lot. Of, some of these guys we're talking about, like they haven't changed in years. They don't necessarily need to, but they're done. They, they've made all the gains they're ever going to make. If they got any bigger, it would just be a big gut. You know, it wouldn't be wouldn't be anything good. Uh, motivation body rule. My nipple looks like fat inside. But I don't have that much fat in my body. I hope you know what I mean. <laughs> you have gynosomastia. It's a swelling of that gland, and you need to go to a doctor and get it removed. Yeah, you have gyno. I'm sorry to tell you. You never heard of gyno, I guess. Uh, Johnny, Dexter was the last short guy to win the Mr. O. Do you, do you like guys like Hottie and Nick Chances? I don't know. It's, it's not a height thing. It's, it's just because when a, when a taller guy is, you know, just as massive, it's, it's that much more impressive. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a tall guy, so I'm not biased either way. I'm not biased toward the short guys or against the short guys, but it's uh, when you see someone like a rod, they take up so much space. It's just they draw your attention. But I'm not saying that Will, that uh, Hadi doesn't have a chance. I, I I'd love to see him win. I mean, I'd love to see any of these guys win because they all work so hard. And you know, I'd love to see Hadi get an Olympia title. I think he's a he's a very nice, humble guy, quiet, hardworking, obviously. Okay, I'm not saying if Rami is 97%, it's over. This is a muscle show at the end of the day. Fully agree, fully agree. Even if I'd say 
I'd back that down to 90 if he's 90%. You know, I've never seen him 100%. Last year, I wouldn't even consider that 100%. I've yet to see Rami as dry and detailed. And I don't think it's a, it's a water issue or body fat issue. He just needs more detail. That would just make his physique so much more impressive. If he had the Phil Heath type of detail, wow, that'd be, wouldn't that be something? At 200, you know, 80, 85, 90 pounds, whew, that'd be nuts. Okay, Steve Eves, I do wish you would put up a better MD backdrop. <laughs> it drives me crazy to see the wrinkles. Sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it is pretty. I do see the wrinkles. You see the wrinkles more that way. If I, if I hold it like that, you don't really see the wrinkles as much. But when the camera's... The camera. When the phone's tilted up, yeah, I can I can see what you're see what you're talking about. Uh, Phil Heath, <laughs> yeah, Phil, wink. Yeah, Phil's out. Phil's not doing it. I don't think we're ever gonna see Phil on stage again, honestly. Hustler, Nick Walker is amazing. At least he looks great in every pose. Um, the only pose of his I'm not crazy about. And this is just nitpicking. I don't like the front lat spread. That's just me. Every other pose, yeah, he's great. No, I don't think too many, there's not many of these guys that look great in every single pose. And some of them, they dominate. Like Nick Walker's rear double bicep, psh, it's lights out. It's a great, great shot. Uh, I'd like to see that next to next to Rami, next to, next to, Hadi's back's not that great, but Bonac has a really good back. Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a good shot to, to compare Nick to those guys in. Um, Dale Wilson, Dark Horse, could be James Hollingshead, top five. Totally, totally. Alberto Montejo, LOL, out the loop, Florida global warming, and reply, oh, to winter is coming. Well, that's what he said last year. Is it going to be winter is coming every year? Because that was still when Game of Thrones hadn't been gone that long, so it was still on people's minds. I hope he doesn't say the same stuff. Uh, well, I guess winter is coming is kind of his catchphrase now. I guess he has to kind of stick with it. Um, David Beast Mode, I got Robert Timms for second. I like Robert's physique a lot. I think he needs more legs. I think he needs more legs. His upper body is phenomenal. I'm just not crazy about those legs. I still, we, I've argued this with people. Some people say the classic guys shouldn't have to have massive legs. That's that's for open bodybuilders. But, you know, Bumstead's got some pretty great legs. Breon's got some pretty great legs. Terrence's legs are pretty great. Tim's, Robert doesn't have legs like those guys. I don't know how much that's going to help him or how, or how much it's going to help him, but I don't know how much it's going to hurt him. But it's still a physique contest. It's still about balance and proportion. So the upper and upper and lower bodies are supposed to be in proportion to each other. So I don't know. Roberts, we'll see what happens. I, I am a fan. I think Roberts got an incredible physique. Uh, and then the next question was from Hustle. Where do you see Robert Timms in classic? Could be as high as second. Could be as low as sixth or seventh, depending on what the judges do with him. Hustle said Regan Grimes aesthetic. Absolutely. The dark man, Nick, he need to dufty. I don't know what that means. He need to Dufty, Hadi, and Brandon and Bonac. I think you mean oh defeat. I think you want to. I think you were trying to see defeat. He needs to defeat Hadi and Brandon and Bonac first to be near Rami. And this is so hard. Nick Mass would have a lot of wicks. We, I think you mean weaknesses. Yeah, I don't think you know. We're not seeing Nick's. This isn't Nick Walker's final form. He's not fully developed. I still think we've we're seeing we're seeing about seventy percent of what we're eventually going to see with him in terms of overall. Physique development, detail. I think he's going to get better and better as time goes by. He just turned 27. I think when Nick Walker's 29, 30, 31, it's going to be a different Nick. It's going to be a much more mature Nick Walker, detailed. Certain areas, the chest will be fuller. He'll, you know, he's he's a very hardworking young guy. He's going to work on all the things he needs to work on, and he'll be getting better and better. Jump tube. I'm going Brandon. That would be, you know, if Brandon could get his title back. So far, the only person who's ever lost the Olympia title, Mr. Olympia title, and got it back was Jay Cutler in 2009. So if Brandon Curry could pull that off, especially where, you know, he's not really in the conversation. Not too many people are talking about, oh, yeah, Brandon's going to probably get his title back. No, you don't, you're not hearing a lot of that. But anything can happen, guys, in this wide world of sports. Benjamin Mail, Nick will win. Rami will be off. You must be part of Walker Nation. Stranger things have happened, guys. Could Nick, Nick could win. Who knows, you know? All your opinions, they're opinions. This is a subjective sport. It's not like a it's not like a race where the guy there's a finish line where somebody crosses it. It's not like that. It's opinions of judges. So your opinions count too. They may not be in line with what the judges 
Friday and Saturday are going to do, but your opinions are valid. You're fans. You have eyes. You can see. Okay. Going Brandon Benjamin Hill, Dark Man, top five. Rami, Bonak. Oh, you got Bonak in second. Hadi, Brandon, Akeem. Oh, you got Akeem up there. Yeah, Akeem could pull it together because people sort of wrote him off after this Arnold because he dropped. He should have won that Arnold. He should have been at least in the running to win that Arnold, but he wasn't wasn't 100% Pete. But that's something he had two. He's had there'll be two weeks between the shows. A lot can change in two weeks when it's just a, a peaking issue. Uh, David's Beast Mode. Robert Timms thought could he challenge Seabum? Uh I if I was a judge, this is just me. I do believe you have to have the legs to match the upper body. He still needs more leg development. I would want to see at least more sweep because he's got a little tiny waist, flaring lats, shoulders out to here. When you have that crazy V taper, you need the flaring thighs, the quad sweep to give you that X frame. X frame. Yeah. Okay. Robert Timms. What about Keon Pearson? Keon fully peaked could win that thing. I'm not writing him off for one minute. Keon's got a Amazing physique, mass, shape, beautiful body. He's just, I've never seen Keon 100% dialed in. Maybe we will this time. If, if so, it's, he's going to be pushing all these guys. Clarita, Derek, Kamal, George. He's going to be pushing all of them for that win for sure. Uh, jump tube, do you mean his mom named him Ronald? So we're talking about Ronnie Coleman. No, his mom named him Ronnie. That's like someone being named John E instead of, you know, like Jonathan or John. He named him Ronnie, or she named him Ronnie. Adrian Elaine, Adrian from Barbados, West Indies. Nathan de Asha and Big Rami would be a great matchup. Nathan seems to be in good shape. A lot of the Bible seem to be coming to shows, but out of shape. Yeah, unfortunately, Nathan is not coming to the Olympia. I don't believe he was able to secure a visa. I don't know if that's, that's an oversight on his part. He didn't quarantine or because of past legal issues that he had. I don't know. I, for whatever reason, Nathan's not coming. Which is sad. I wanted to see him in the show. He's especially, he looked great winning that uh, Arnold UK a few days ago. I, I would have loved to have seen him back because he's been off the Olympia stage now for this will be three years. 2018 was the last time we saw him. Uh, Amar, what to take apart from caffeine to have the same focus and alertness? Because I'm having palpitations in caffeine and anxiety issues. Uh, some nootropic. There's these nuo. Look up Google nuo, N O O T R O P I C S. They're supplements, drugs, whatever, that they're specifically for mental acuity and clarity. And yeah, if you can't take caffeine, don't take caffeine. Uh, Trey Walker, where does Hunter place? Good question. I'm not writing Hunter off for a minute. He's had uh, time, a little time, more time to improve since, since winning the Chicago Pro. Um, yeah, Hunter, Hunter's going to be up there. Where will he place? I don't know. He could be as high as fifth. Fifth or sixth would be great. He was eighth last year. So anything, if he could if he could move up at all from that, it's a win. You know, this is not like a, this isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. If you can move up in the Olympia a little bit every year, you're getting closer and closer to first place, obviously. Hustler, I can guess that Hassan Mustafa will be off. He's done eight shows this year, or this is his eighth. It's a lot of shows. His body's, I, I commend him because I can't imagine him. He's been in prep all year. He did the Indy Pro back in April. So he's probably been dieting the, all year long, literally all year long. He's done. He's peaked for all these shows. He stayed lean all this time. I would love to see Hassan take a break, a good break, like a six-month off season. Just let his body first, just take like a month, no training, just eating normal. Let his body just relax, heal, because prep is brutal. Any of you guys who've competed, you know that the diet and all the cardio and it just takes a toll on you. So I'd love to see Hassan take some time off. Uh, come back maybe late next season, refreshed, because he's got crazy, crazy physique, all the size in the world. Structure, not the prettiest. Shape, not the prettiest. But, man, a ton of muscle, just round, hanging muscle. Love to see that guy in shape. I would love to see it. And I think he needs a break to achieve that. His body seems to be rebelling at this point. Uh, Eddie, Skeddy, how far back do you think Rami will fall if he misses his conditioning? See, some people forget that it happened quite a few times past. If he's just a little bit off, I could see him sliding to second because he's still big Rami. He's still the champ. Um, I, I don't think he could be any worse than third unless he's way off. I've never seen Rami way off. So we'll see. Scott Stevenson. Oh, are you the Scott Stevenson? Ron, if you could coach any of the open men's guys in the O for a year, who would you choose and why? 
Good question. Hmm. Well, they all have great coaches, so I'm not saying when I say this, when I answer this, it's not it's not to say that I would be better than whoever's coaching them. These these coaches are all better than me. They, this is what they do for a living. This is their job. If I could work with any of the Mr. Olympia guys for a year, hmm. I honestly don't know if I'd be able to help any of them beyond what they've already been doing. Yeah. So you know what? I'm not even going to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't think I could do anything for these guys that they, they haven't been doing already. They're at the top of their games. I coach a few, you know, I, I coach amateurs. It's, I'm a, I'm a good coach. I'm not at the level of like a Honey Rambot or a Chad Nichols or Matt Jansen. These, they're the, they're the cream of the crop. They're the best coaches. That's why they get paid the big bucks to coach people. So let's see. But that was a good question, Scott. Uh, do you have an answer? You can give me your answer. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to know what you would say. Uh, the Dark Man. Remember my top five, please, because this will be real. Okay. So you have Rami Bonak. Rami winning, Bonak second, Hadi third, fourth, Brandon five, Akim six, Nick. I wouldn't say that can't happen. That could, could very well be it. Uh, what the judges, they will be looking for big size or... So they're looking for everything. It's a total package. Structure, which is bone structure, you know, wide shoulders, small hips, uh, arms and legs that aren't too long or too short proportions shape the shape of the muscles round muscles are better than square muscles um, size you have to have size it's bodybuilding condition you have to be very very lean to be able to show all the different muscle groups and everything uh, you have to be able to present yourself you have to be a good poser so it's a total package it's it's everything it's not just the if it was the biggest guy then Rami would have won every Olympia already that he'd been in and he's been in every Olympia he's only missed one since 2013. Uh, and there have been some very big guys in the past. Size-wise, they were bigger than whoever was winning the Olympia at the time, but they weren't winning the Mr. Olympia because they didn't have the total package. Uh, Fishtail Adventure. What a great name. Sean. Okay, so this is 212. Sean, Keon, George. Yeah, maybe. Geez, that leaves Derek and Kamala at the top three. Yikes. Unknown user. Don't you think Ian Valliere is overrated? He has too many flaws, no triceps, weak chest, zero calves, mediocre back. I think you're being overly harsh on him. He doesn't have no triceps. His triceps aren't the greatest. He has, look at his side tricep, Sean. He's got triceps. Chest, it's not the greatest, but it's not weak. Zero calves, they're not great. They're not terrible. If he was overrated, he wouldn't be winning these shows. He wouldn't be beating Kuklo and all these other people. Ian's very good. Yeah, he's got some weak points for sure. You know, that's why I'm not, he's not in my conversation for top five at this point when he, if he can bring up some of these areas you just talked about, sure. And he is getting better. Ian, Ian's put on a lot of size over the past few years. He turned pro years ago, 2014, 2013. I think he was only like 210 pounds when he turned pro. I remember seeing pictures of him in Flex Magazine. They only had, because it was the, the Olympia, Amateur Olympia Latin America or something. It was in Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, I think. And he won. And I saw the picture, like, oh, my God. This is who they're giving pro cards now to? He was so much smaller. I was not impressed at all. He wasn't a lot bigger than, uh, not even as big as a lot of the classic guys are now. But anyway, he's come a long way since then, obviously. Cool Axe DW. If everyone is in top shape, you go with number one, Big Rami. Number two, Brandon Curry. Three, Nick Walker. Four, anyone else. If Kuklo is dry, he's in second. Kuklo is not in the show. He didn't make it. He, uh, he would have had to win the Arnold last week to get in there, and he got third. So, yeah, Steve Kuklo is not in the Olympia. I got in trouble with you guys for a couple of videos. I forgot Logan wasn't qualified. I don't know. I knew. I knew he wasn't qualified for Olympia, Logan Franklin. But I was so impressed with him at the Arnold that when I was talking about the Arnold with uh, both Giles Thomas and Jose, I, I started saying, you know, I think Logan could be top five, top four. And people jumped down my throat. Yeah, I was, I don't know why I was, I just, I think I was so impressed with Logan at, at the Arnold that it, it blanked. I forgot that he wasn't qualified for the Olympia. Latchy C, do you think Brandon can bring up his legs? Personally, I don't think so. They do look better. They do. I've been, I've been following his uh, social media and they look a little better. You know, it's, it's, if he didn't have such round, full muscles on the upper body, he wouldn't need much more legs. But like I said, he's got so much going on up here. You want to see more in the lower body. 
I don't know if he can bring him up. He's he's getting up there in age, and he's already made so many improvements. I don't know. I'd love to see it. I don't like to write anybody off and say they can't ever do this. They can't. Like, there's people I, I used to say, he's never going to be in shape. And then, you know, one day they showed up in shape. Or he's never going to bring up those, well, I wouldn't say calves, because most people never bring up their calves. But I've been proven wrong so many times, which is great. I love to see people beat the odds, these underdogs that people write off, a-holes like me write off. I love to see them show up just friggin' awesome, better than ever, and just surprise. I love surprises. You know, th these shows would be boring if it was, you know, you knew exactly how everybody was going to look, and... You had a really good idea of how everyone was going to be placed. To be no, it's not that exciting of a sport as it is compared to something like, you know, football or basketball, where you have people running up and down a field or a court and slamming into each other. You have all kinds of action going on. There's no action in bodybuilding; it's just guys posing. Okay, S. Elsh, unknown user, yes, and I don't know why he keeps winning and getting high placings. I think you're talking about Ian. Uh, Hustle Ron, can you give some tips for skinny fat people? Lack of muscle mass and higher body fat. Uh, gain, gain a bunch of... I know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being a, a dick when I say this. I'm being dead serious. You need to gain a lot of muscle and you know eat very clean and you'll get leaner and you won't be skinny fat anymore. Skinny fat is typically just the way untrained people look. People that don't work out and they don't eat right. They don't have much muscle and they you know eat junk and fast food so they accumulate body fat so they get that skinny fat look. So work out hard, put on some muscle, eat clean, get leaner, do some cardio, and you'll look much, much better. You won't be skinny fat anymore. Eat better, says Ryan Z. Luke Kondak, Nick Walker with, looks like about six or eight exclamation points. Ryan Z, and you'll have abs, true. Ryan Z, train more efficiently, not harder, you'll grow muscle. Okay, this is all still for Hustler. Fishtail Adventure, LOL, Nick said on the way to Florida, no sign of winter here. Yeah, you know, I like Nick's confidence. It's, it's confidence is, is so often confused for arrogance. And some people can be super confident and no one ever says, oh, he's arrogant. And other people, I don't know why, they get, uh, they get slammed for it. But, you know, Nick believes in himself. He's working hard every day. You, you can't work your very hardest unless you believe you can win. Otherwise, why are you going to work that hard? It's like, would you work that hard at a job if you know you're never going to make more than like minimum wage? Like you're never going to make it? If you honestly believed it, no, you're not going to work that hard. Because like, why bother? I'm not going to make any much money anyway. But if you believe you have this potential to be a great champion, which he does, and he's already won the Arnold Classic, and he's just a kid, he's 27. Um, I don't know how he's going to do with this Olympia. We'll see. We'll see. It's it's uh, so early in his, his career. Fish chill adventure. Winter is here. Is that what you're going to say? Winter is here, LOL. Uh, that was Ghost in Ryan Z, Rami should have went with, I am inevitable this year. You know, Rami's working on his English. It's a lot better than my Arabic. That's for damn sure. But uh, his vocabulary is still fairly limited. Uh, like I said, it's way better than my Arabic, so I'm not putting him down, believe me. I speak English, kind of, <laughs> and some very half-ass Spanish. Very half-ass. Okay, so, Ruben Carranza. It's two R's, so you roll your R's. Ruben Carranza, it's going to be first Rami, second Nick, then third Hadi, four Brandon. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if it shakes out that way. That would mean Nick beats a former Olympia champion, Brandon Curry, and he beats Hadi, who's incredible. Incredible bodybuilder. SL says, went to my ass. <laughs> Tamin Ray, I just want to see my main man, James Hong, said, place top six. Very, very likely. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of James. I, I admire his work ethic, his persistence, uh, strong as hell. If you know, for a lot of you guys, admire the. You don't want you don't want these guys to just have physique. You want them to be super strong too. And James is super strong. A lot of these guys we're talking about are. Uh, Brandon Kidd. Brandon is a, a two twelve pro or class physique. Brandon, one of those. Brandon's a pro. Terrence is looking good, but do you think he can beat Chris? Well, I don't want to get him upset at me. Can he beat Chris? You know, if Chris is off. If Chris looked better than last year, which by all posts that he's been making, he looks freaking insane. His back's even better. Bumstead's better than last year, so he's going to be tough to knock off. Terrence, does Terrence have a shot? Sure. You know, Terrence is, Terrence is great in his own right, obviously. 
He got second place in the world last year. And he just won the Arnold Classic. He's no joke. Alex Cambronero, got to put in, got to put his name in there too. Alex is is very very good. I don't like to forget anybody, although I do all the time. Trend Bologna Sandwich, best name. I love that name, Trend Bologna Sandwich. Is that from that guy that uh, was a big? What's his name? Is Ask Big Frank or something? That makes all those screaming videos. He's got like the the the, the do rag or the the cur the thing pulled down almost over his eyes, and he's all jacked and like screaming all the time. He's talking. He's always talking about Trend Bologna Sandwiches. Okay, why do you always have that camera angle from the bottom? Why don't you use front shot? Because that's my phone, and I'm pointing at right now. This is recording from my phone, and I have the computer, the desktop, whatever you want to call it, right here. It's leaning up against the desktop, because that way I can see the live chat and I can answer the questions. Uh, yeah, that's why I do it that way. Sorry if it's it's annoying. I won't be on much longer, I promise. Rene J. Gore Gore Guerrero, Guerrero, how good do you think Labrado will play? Uh, Hunter Labrada, not Lee. <laughs> I always think of Lee Labrada because that was my era. Yeah, Hunter, I wouldn't write Hunter off as a possible top five. He's very, very good. He's getting better. He's another young guy. He's a work in progress, but, you know, I would not say, uh, he was eighth last year. I wouldn't say top five is out of, out of reach for him at all. It could happen. We'll see. Vince Paul, if Seabum wins, can't give second regard dramatically smaller legs. Just my take. There's so many different looks in class of physique. There's so many different types of bodies. It's not like we only, you know, if, if they were only going for Chris's type of physique, where it was, you had to be six foot tall, well, what the top three would be? Him, Rob Timms, Robert Timms, and Wesley Vissers, probably, right? Who else is really that tall in classic? I guess Brian Jones is pretty tall. He's probably, he's probably close to six foot, I'm thinking. But, I mean, if you have, you had, Chris was first last year, and he's six foot foot and a half, six one, two hundred and thirty pounds. Ruffin is about five five, five six, I think one eighty. So two very, very different type of Zeeks. You can't just say there's one type that's uh what they're looking for. There's many there are many types of great classic Zeeks, it seems to me. Uh Luke Condak, do you think the reason Ian gets so much hate is because he has the Dorian Yates thing where his conditioning is way better in person? I don't know why. You know, everybody. These guys all get a lot of everyone. Every everyone we're talking about gets a lot of hate from some areas. You know, there's there's I don't know why. People have their favorites, and they also have, especially if they have a lot of people. They're so biased toward their favorite guy that they feel the need to put down all the other guys, which it shouldn't be that way. But that's that's just the reality of it. So uh, let's see. Mohammed Akhtar, Rami for the win, Nick in fifth or sixth, in my opinion. Jer B, Nick Trigilli said on YouTube Prediction Olympia that Ian Nick should shut it down. Three times a peak for show, it's too stressful. What do you think? Ian's been looking great at every show. He doesn't, he's not getting worse. Nick looked better at the Arnold than he did in New York Pro. I don't see why he can't. There's this whole myth that some guy, some guys who have trouble peaking multiple times in a year. They say it's impossible to peak, but you see these other guys who do it. So maybe for some guys it is very, very hard or impossible to peak multiple times, and others it's just not. Uh, so I don't, I don't agree with uh, Trigilli on that one, no. Johnny, is the Olympic coming back to Vegas next year? Uh, last time I talked to Dan Solomon about it, it was looking like, yes, full steam ahead for Planet Hollywood next year, back in Vegas where it was for 20 years. Um... XL Solid Snake XL. I hope Kai got a special invite with no one knows and he just shows up for the show. Well, that would be very, very exciting. I don't see it happening, but it would be very exciting for sure. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to see Kai compete again, honestly. Steve Eves, do you ever think they'll bring back a Masters Olympia? I'd like to see Vince Taylor, Lee Labrada, etc. I just don't see enough demand for it, so no. The last couple times they held it, it was, you know, independent promoter. Uh, she was having trouble getting enough money to put the show on. It's just there wasn't enough sponsorship interest in the older guys, in a show with the older guys. And, you know, I'm 52, so I'm not biased against older guys. I'm older, but I just don't see a whole lot of interest from the majority of fans, unfortunately. Joseph, what do you think on Kamal placement? Could win? Could be second, third, fourth? Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Jason Geno. Zach, I have Jason Geno over taking the men's open class. Whatever happened to Jason? I haven't heard anything about Genova in a long time. Like, I want to say, like, a couple of years now. I think he finally gave up on being a YouTuber. 
Brandon Kidd, how do you feel about Ian? How about his comments about continuing to compete after already qualifying for Olympia? Uh, I like Ian a lot. He's got a great work ethic. Uh, as far as competing after qualifying, yeah, that's how it used to be. You're a professional bodybuilder. Your job is to compete in pro bodybuilding. It's not to qualify for a show and then sit back and let someone else. No, it's every man for himself. They wouldn't care about you. They don't care about him. They wouldn't worry about taking his qualification away. I guarantee it. So why should he worry about theirs? No, pro bodybuilder, if you can keep competing and winning like, you know, the 90s, those guys used to do, guys like Milos and Vince Taylor and Kevin uh, Cormier, you'd see those guys sometimes in six, eight, ten shows a year at times because they were at competitors. That was their job. They were pro bodybuilders, so they competed. They didn't just qualify for the Olympia and then, all right, I'm done. No, they would keep keep winning as much money as they could, as many titles as they could. Why not? Why would you worry about the other guy? Penultimate task. Says one Rami, two Hottie, three Nick, four Bonac, five James, Scott Stevenson, LOL, yes, tough O. Selyon, S E L, violin. Some YouTuber had talked with Chad, saw the pics of Rami, and one of them said he's going to be Mr. O for the next five years. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Maritime Tease, do you think the judge needs some revamping? There's been consensus that the judges are losing sight of criteria. Nah, that's not going to happen, guys. Judging, judging is very hard. It's a subjective sport, so no one, they're never going to have everyone agreeing with their decisions. It's very, very hard to do what they do. I, I sit there right behind them, and a lot of times I'm like, oh my God, what are they going to do with, how are they going to place? These three all look great to me. I don't, you know, and I've been going to shows since, you know, 91 Olympia. The 1991 Olympia is the first one I went to, so I've been, I've been to most of them since. I've only missed a couple. Uh, let's see. Alberto Monteo, odds maker, got Sean Clarita. Okay. Was that Vegas odds? Oh, is that a real website? I don't know. Undead Sonia and LOL. No, Hottie is wide. Nick isn't undead. So Nick is really narrow. Kevin Weeks. Kevin from Barbados. Regan Grimes has added some size since last year with his shape and balance. Do you think he could sneak into the top eight? Sure, it could happen. What do you think of Rob Tim's chances to make top three? I already said that. He needs more legs. Not to say it can't happen, but if I was a judge, I'd want to see more legs on him. That's all. Uh, George White. Ron, have you seen pros James Holland? He's looking real... James has been looking good, like ready to go for a long time now. So he's one of those guys I'm not like, oh, no, is he going to be in shape? James is going to be in great shape. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, Scott Stevenson, okay. He said Muhammad M would be a fun challenge. Remember, full year, Muhammad M. Which Muhammad is M? There's Muhammad Shaban. Who's the other Muhammad? Maybe you meant to say Shaban. I don't know who Muhammad M is. Regan is a great guy. Would be great to work with, I think. Yeah, yeah I would like to see him. Would be great to see him full-blown. I'd love to see Regan with more size. He's got beautiful shape, structure. I just would love to see more size on him. And he's a big he's a big kid. But so some of you are going to say, he doesn't need more size. Trust me, when he stands up there with these guys we're talking about, he needs more size. I hope he compares better. Brandon Kidd, do you feel classic starting to edge out open as far as popularity and what the fans want to see slash watch? No, it's getting more popular. I don't see it ever edging out open. Open is always going to be, it's the freak show. It's the biggest, it's that old, that old thing about, you know, what do you go to the, you go to the zoo not to see the, something you can see in your backyard, like a squirrel or a dog or a cat. You go to the zoo to see lions, elephants, alligators, you know, big, scary animals. Uh, let's see. Kevin Weeks with the details that Nick Walker brings along with his mass balance. Who do you think can displace from the predicted top four? A Rami, Brandon, Hadi, and Bonac. Who could he knock out? I mean, he could knock out any of those guys if they're off. Bonac, out of those names, probably Bonac would be the one guy I think he has the best chance. But we'll see. You know, Bonac's no joke. I'm not trying to trying to write him off. Matt, yeah, I'll put money on it. From what I hear, Roly is in Orlando. Yeah, I heard he was there too. Greg Doucette. Who's ever gotten 212? Oh, man, it's going to go EQ or DECA. All right, guys, I've been going on for a very long time here, so it's time to say goodbye. There'll be more. Um, check out YouTube tomorrow, please. Uh, 12, 1215, 1215 Eastern Time. Giles, Tiger, Thomas, and I have our preview show where we give our predictions and uh, really get into it. It was a little over an hour. We went over Open, Classic, and 212. And I have Dan Solomon interview coming up tomorrow talking about this Olympia and what's different about it. Uh, all kinds of good content on this channel. And of course, musculodevelopment.com. 
all weekend long. Coverage brought to you by High Tech Pharmaceuticals. We'll be at our on-site in Orlando with the athletes, getting as much good content for you guys as can as we can. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it very much. Like, subscribe, click, thumbs up, all that good stuff.